You ready? Yeah. You sure? Let's do it. Hey everybody, um, Blake and Forrest from the OnKing team. Um, we're really excited to be here uh, working with Amboss. We are very grateful for all the questions that have been submitted and we're excited to um, go ahead and address these and hopefully it can be useful for some of you out there. So yeah, let's dive into our first question. Arundhati, who is graduating in 2023, asked um, in regards to USMLE prep, what do you think differentiates someone who scores absurdly high, like a 270 plus, from someone who scores in the 250s? Is it going through more questions, uh, knowing all the minutia, or is it just plain luck? Yeah, I don't think at that point it can be luck. There's a lot of preparation that goes into getting really top scores on the step exams. Because the difference between a 250 and a 270 is actually not strictly 20 questions. Um, the difference could be just a couple of questions that'll get you a much higher score. Yeah. And that difference is made up in the details. You have to be a very good test taker, which requires a lot of practice questions. And you have to be um, very strong on the, the content. And the preparation includes doing those five hammer questions in Amboss. Those five hammer questions are some of the most difficult, um, not only in Amboss, but the real exam is going to have five hammer questions, so to speak, that you may have never seen a question like that before. You may have never prepared specifically for that um, use of that material. Um, but on the exam, you need to know how to reason through that even though you've never seen it presented that way before. So using AMBOSS is a good tool because they prepare you with those extremely difficult questions and they mark them as extremely difficult. So you know how well you're doing on that small percentage of questions that most students are failing. Yeah. Do you think it, it's more of a differentiation between those who know how to take a test really well or do you think it really does matter on the content level between those kind of levels? That's a good question because the content is necessary. But if you're a good test taker, that is enough to get you several points higher on the exam. And so the more practice questions you do and the more practice exams you take, um, the more likely you will be able to do well on that exam. Because um, there's a lot of other than content, there's a, lot, there's a lot of test taking strategies that are essential. All right. So um, Richard Jimenez from Rocky Vista, he asked, what makes AMBOSS different than USMLE RX, Physio, or Sketchy Med? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, it's important to understand that AMBOSS has a multifaceted approach to medical education. It's not just a question bank. It's not just a library. It's, you know, it's not just a video platform or something like that. The thing that really sets it apart is how it integrates everything. From the question bank, you can open up the article that corresponds to it. You can save things to folders. You can create a study plan. It will auto um, designate when you need to do things for you. Um, and then the analysis tool, I think, really stands above um, what the other platforms has. So it can really point out, you know, where are you struggling? What specifically do you need to study um, in order to help improve your scores and such? I think that that large scale collaboration and integration of all of their you know, every aspect of their product really stands apart from the rest. I completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Questions coming from at Kojo Locked In at the Meharry Medical College. He or she is wondering, what do you recommend for students to utilize Anki to its fullest in their curriculum if their curriculum has them take step one in their third year after their core rotations? Cheers. That's a good question. Uh, you know, we get that question a lot and I will preface this by saying it's hard for me to answer because I didn't do that. But uh, it's it's much easier to answer now that step one is pass fail, right? Uh, that's totally true. That's a good because point. Because so the step one and the step two overlap is probably like 70 to 80%. There's, they are very, very similar. And I actually tell people now I wouldn't change how I approach step one, even though it is pass fail, because everything you study for step one, is, that's your foundation for all of your shelf exams and step two. So I would study as hard as you can. Uh, you obviously can't keep up on your Anki flashcards through your third year, but you can suspend those and start working on step two stuff, knowing that you're still reviewing and covering 70% of the step one stuff, uh, which if you studied really hard should be enough to pass step one. Uh, and then you can perform really well on step two, which is, is going to be the primary driver for, you know, when you're applying to residency and stuff. Yeah. Would, would you agree? Yeah, I know. I, I totally agree with what Nick was saying. The only thing I think I would add is that there's a lot of like good data that would show that if you take step one after your clinical year, 
you improve your performance. It's like actually seeing patients makes you a better doctor. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next question uh, comes from Badji Mokhtar. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, they said, can we only rely on just Onking and Amboss without going through first aid 2022? Yeah, without relying on first aid 2022, um, Amboss and Anki are sufficient to get you through to step one and even step two. Um, I personally didn't read through all of first aid in order to um, score well on step one or score well on step two. All of the content that you need for step one and step two are in Amboss. And um, I think that minimizing the distractions and focusing on just a couple of resources is one of the best ways to use your time in medical school. Yeah, I would say a lot of a, a common mistake that people make in medical school is getting too overwhelmed with all of the different resources, thinking they have to complete everything of every resource. And that's just not the case. You could choose just AMBOSS and you could make it through and do well on all of your exams if you did it very thoroughly and uh, you know did it frequently as well. And AMBOSS is built off of the USMLE outline and um, what you need to do step one, step two, all those exams. And so it, it follows the same outline that first aid does. Exactly. All right, a third year uh, from the university in Kuwait asked, with step one going pass fail, I did not start using Anki until we started our systems and neglected it in foundations, basically their physiology, biochem, farm, et cetera. Um, they asked, should I start watching the corresponding boards and beyond, pathoma and sketchy micro content in the summer to catch up or will just doing AMBOSS QBanks and learning on the go be sufficient? Yeah, that's uh, it is a hard situation to be in where, um, you know, you feel like you have to be on catch up, but um, it's not always necessary to, to play catch up during the summers. It's important that uh, to know that during medical school and during your residency, um, you might not have a lot of time to enjoy these summers again. So it's important to enjoy. But if you have time and you feel like you want to be productive using the Anki, the Anking deck to study the bugs and drugs, as we like to say, um, the pharmacology and the microbiology is actually some of the best use of your summer and you don't have to go um, extremely in depth and, and go too hard during the summer, but it would put you ahead of the curve if you used your summer to use that. Yeah, I think we also recommend to a lot of people that you know, as you start including more questions into your, um, you know, your study regime that you can add some of those cards and maybe go watch some of those extra videos from those other resources as you see it necessary. You know, say you're missing a lot of um, questions on a certain topic and it's a pattern that you're seeing, then maybe go back and watch those and add the cards, um, you know, corresponding to that. Sometimes it can be really tempting to just add, you know, a few hundred cards every, you know, couple, you know, weeks or something like that, trying to catch up. Um, and sometimes, you know, they're not really that important. I think it's, um, it's important to really recognize that the step exam is not built off of a like a whole inclusive, you need to know 100% of the content perfectly well. Um, the exam really focuses on like a really high yield portion of it. And so by doing questions, you're gonna recognize, you know, are there actually lapses in your knowledge? Are you, you know, needing to supplement any of that? One nice feature of the Onking deck that we're continually improving upon is the fact that we've tagged out high and low yield topics. And we've especially done that with pharmacology. And there are not that many low yield cards in our deck, but if you're pressed for time, you can sort of avoid the lowest yield topics and try to focus your time on the high yield topics that we have outlined for you. And this is vetted by people who have taken the exam. Um, more than one of us has looked at this. Thanks again, everyone, for sending in questions. We remind you that um, both Onking and Amboss are dedicated to answering student questions and um, making sure you have all the resources necessary to succeed during medical school. We've been through the process. Amboss is intimately involved in medical student life and improving it. So um, we remind you that we have lots of resources at your fingertips to get more help. Yeah, we're, we're grateful for all of your support and we wish you the best of luck.